adopted a new overarching strategic direction for the district in June 2015. This was developed over a number of months, through workshops, surveys, forums, informal feedback, submissions, and even over a sit down and chat with a biscuit and a cup of tea at the market. It was definitely a real community effort. We ended up with a strategy that was very tailored to our community, and achieving it will admittedly be a big and a collaborative undertaking. This is because a visionary document like this is never going to be a quick win, and we really shouldn't expect it to be. It is deliberately aspirational, and it is going to require commitment over a number of years, and that will both be in terms of meeting the strategic objectives themselves, and also in getting everyone signed up to it, understanding it, and pulling in the same direction. Early on it became clear that we needed a strategy that was going to really stretch us. It had to be something that was agile and responsive. It needed to plan our strengths, but it also needed to build on these. It also had to be something that was energising and exciting, the sort of thing people could really get behind. But at the same time, it had to provide some specific focus for Council, so we knew where to direct our efforts for maximum impact. We asked people to really visualise how they wanted our district to look and feel in the future close their eyes and imagine. It was important though that we didn't just dream up a series of lofty end goals, but that we also got people to come up with the steps that we were going to need to take collectively to get there. We took everyone's ideas and started grouping them together. Fairly early on patterns emerged, so we kept hearing similar themes and aspirations coming through. For example, people would say things to us like, you know we're Monganui, we're really kind of maverick, or we have all of this lifestyle appeal, but people just don't know about us. We need to sell ourselves more, and we really need to be this place of choice so people have a realistic option to come here or to stay here. So with all of this going on, it was actually fairly easy to begin to shape our strands around some key things. And these were community, connectivity, creativity, the environment, and the economy. And we knew that these needed to be interwoven for the best chance of success. We then took these ideas back to the community in the form of a draft vision and strategy before they were finally signed off. So we ended up with something that sounded kind of snappy, but what does it really mean? What is leading edge? I think for a start, it's important to point out that it really is a reflection of what was fed back to us. Namely, that we need to capitalize on the innovation that our size and history has bred. And we need to start finding creative ways to really punch above our weight and position ourselves as leaders in whatever it is that we're doing. The leading edge strategy itself guides all of Council's decision making, so it might help to imagine it a bit like an umbrella, sitting at the top of our strategic framework and providing overarching direction, with everything flowing down from this. For example, from big documents like the 10 year plan through to our operational plans, as well as the things we do on a day to day basis. It sets our community outcomes too. Although it's Council's strategic document, it is definitely about working in partnership with the community on these principles, and that is why it was so important to develop this in partnership with the community. It had to be a vision that we could all share. I think it's fair to say that it really has been developed by this district for this district. So each strand has a goal, then there are some measures so we can track how well we are progressing, then strategic objectives and actions. The high level goals and objectives will stay the same but the strategy needs to be flexible and responsive enough to reflect our annual planning process. And so by that I just mean that the actions are going to change every year, because obviously we are going to complete some, and then we'll need to add some new ones. We have an implementation plan too, and this is an active document. So all that really means is that we update it every quarter with the progress that we have made. At the moment, we have a number of actions that are underway. In terms of the strategy itself, the first strand is deeply united. When we talked to people, this concept of unity came through strongly, but we were told that this needed to be a deep and authentic commitment that covers our intentions in relation to partnerships, being a really resilient and respectful place, a place where there's a high level of belonging and well-being, where we celebrate diversity, we know who we are and where we came from. In terms of action examples, we are focusing on neighbourhood connectedness and revitalisation of our suburbs. So at the moment, we are working with the Castle Cliff community. We also want to continue to achieve World Health Organization Safe Community Accreditation. We've been updating our result cards and re-accreditation is due to happen this month. We are also looking at developing a settlement strategy. 
So this would be about welcoming and attracting new people to our district. And for a start, we have worked on a settlement profile in conjunction with the community. We have operational examples too. So these are things that our staff are committed to on a day-to-day -day basis. So that might be like running our dog safety education programs, the sort of funding that is provided for community contracts, maybe running emergency management drills, or looking after our archives. When we talk about being globally connected, we take a pretty broad view of what connectedness means. So that incorporates our efforts in relation to transport connectivity, digital connectivity, the relationships we have regionally, positioning ourselves on the global stage, and making sure we are making the right noise so we are plugged into and acknowledged positively by the rest of the country and maybe even the rest of the world. In terms of action examples, we are constructing the downriver section of the Mountains to Sea Trail and that work has just kicked off. We are also wanting to maintain our Smart 21 status and maybe even become the Intelligent Community of the Year. This year we made it into the top seven for the first time. We also want to leverage our sister city relationships to achieve even greater cultural, educational and economic benefit and investment. So at the moment we are developing a specific strategy with a particular focus on Asia. And again, we have operational examples. So things like running our computer clubhouse, keeping the roads smooth and operating the airport. Powered by Creative Smarts taps into the maverick and modern day number eight wire approach that we seem to do so well. So it is about our arts community and cultural facilities, but it's also about attracting innovative ideas, people and businesses. We want a knowledge economy and to be more productive. We also want to use business savvy and really commit to continuous improvement. In terms of some action examples, we are looking to adopt a creative city strategy. This work hasn't started yet. The very first step is going to be getting ourselves assessed according to the index. Of course, we are supporting the Sargent Gallery redevelopment project as a powerful arts anchor, and there might even be the opportunity to create a central city library and innovation quarter to provide a hothouse environment for digital startup entrepreneurs. And again, in-house we are doing some cool and creative things too, like supporting business cluster opportunities, making really smart investments, committing to continuous improvement, and supporting the staging of performances at our facilities like the Royal Wanganui Opera House. Flowing with Richness is about the environment, again, though we take a pretty comprehensive view of what environment means. So it is about the natural environment, but it's also about the built environment. So it's committing to our heritage. It's about being a really vibrant and attractive place. It's about showcasing our identity, having tons going on through activities, attractions and events. It's making the most of our natural resources, but it's also about having really thoughtful urban design. In terms of some actions, we are continuing to respond positively and proactively to earthquake prone building issues. We want to support, create and grow events, whether those are big ones, the iconic ones we have, or whether they are smaller off-peak events through our event strategy. We also want to protect our soil conditions and rural assets and activities through the district plan. And operationally, again, we're doing some pretty cool things too. We are encouraging events now to have a recycling plan. We provide natural burial options. We are continuing to dispose of stormwater in an environmentally sustainable way and we want to support more events and activities along the riverfront. Works for Everyone was a strand that really resonated when we went out to the community. People kept talking to us about choice and those realistic options to either come here or stay here. So this one is really about selling those lifestyle advantages. It's about being business friendly and having those employment and education options. It's about running the district positively and looking after our infrastructure so we have the right services and facilities for our community. And it's really about being a place that is flourishing both economically and socially. At the moment, we are focusing on actions like developing a sport and recreation strategy. We also want to adopt a business friendly policy to ensure that we are truly open for business and investment. And we are supporting the 100% Suite initiative to assist students into training and employment. The leading edge strategy is critical to the success of this organisation and this district. So it's vitally important that staff and elected members understand it, get behind it and support it. Here's what some of our staff members have to say about the leading edge strategy and what it means to them 
and their work. Being leading edge means that you're always thinking of new ways of doing things. Um, or new people to work with to bring in, so you're not working in an isolated way. Um, it means challenging some of the status quo, or because we work in a regu regulatory environment, sometimes having to do things that we've always done, but thinking of new ways of doing things. It means saying yes or maybe rather than no. Um, it means doing research about what other communities around the world are doing, and it means working on our strengths as a small, community in New Zealand to get the best resources we can get to do the best job for the people that are here. And always just keeping an eye out for the next best way of getting things out there. It's breaking that ground of how things are done and how we want to do things. Taking steps that may be scary for companies and individuals but being in a safe place to be able to achieve what may be deemed unachievable, whether it's boosting up the morale in the workplace or setting goals outside in the community that we want to achieve. It's just being at the forefront and taking the lead and the initiative and trying to make everything a better place in a better way. To me it's smart buying um, and it's smart delivery. Uh, it is looking at uh, ways that we can be better than we were yesterday. Uh, and in today's market, or today's thinking uh, of being quite a leader and an innovative, uh, where the world is changing on a constant basis, is actually being at the forefront so that we can, or that I can deliver what the community needs. proud of Wanganui, I want people from afar to look at Wanganui and go, that's the place that I want to move to. Um, so things like working together as a community, being really innovative, um, celebrating all of the creative things or the beautiful environment that we have is really important and I think it's the sort of thing that puts Wanganui on the map in New Zealand but also um, on a global stage. Uh, as far as the organisation goes, it's really great to work um, in an environment where you're encouraged to think differently, um, work in a different way with the community, come up with different projects to achieve this amazing end goal, um, and I guess work with people that feel the same way um, that you do about making great things happen.